Three, two. Karen Bryant for MMA Heat. I'm here with UFC President Dana White. Dana, you know I covered boxing before I got into MMA. I do. I saw a beautiful display tonight from Rashad Evans. Head, head, body, body. The guy looked awesome. Awesome. I agree. I, I, you know, John Jones tweeted tonight, same old, same old. I don't know what he was seeing. I didn't see the same old, same old. Same old, same old would be if Rashad came in double-legged, laid on the guy for three rounds and won a decision. That was far from the same old, same old. I'm a huge believer in ring rust. And, you know, that might have blew my whole theory on, on ring rust. He, he looked, not only, you know, you knew at the weigh-ins and, and leading up to the fight, there were pictures out of him. He looked amazing, yeah. you know. It's one thing, you, it's easy to look, get in great shape when you got nutritionists and all this other stuff. It's another thing to go and perform the way that he performed and I was blown away by Rashad's performance. Yeah, I, I was very pleased with that and I and I also thought it was really exciting to have the crowd again though, chanting Tito, Tito. Did that take you back? Did that bring back some memories? Yeah, and it didn't, It didn't. Uh, that's the other thing that was impressive. He didn't go in there and, and beat a deadbeat Tito Ortiz or a Tito Ortiz who took a fight on a short notice. Tito Ortiz came out of that fight, he had a great training camp, Won an impressive fashion in the first round, took no damage in the fight, and then took a week off, which is a good thing, and then jumped right back into camp. So uh, the, the fact that the, the Tito Ortiz that he beat tonight is impressive too. And let me tell you what, and I don't care what anybody says, I don't care what Rashad says, I don't care what anybody who, I don't care what they say. If Tito would have got that leg out and flipped that over, and, and that would have been a full guard, and, and I. I don't care if he rolled with Henzo, Hickson, and, and, and Hoist right. all in the same week. That would have been tough to get out of. Yeah, absolutely. No, I thought, here we go, it's Bader all over again. Yep. I mean, it was it was crazy. Where Rashad did a good job being deep in that guillotine and being able to make sure that leg didn't get over. He did stop that leg getting over, and it was impressive. Well, and it was good because a lot of people, if they hadn't been in the ring for a while, they might panic. He seemed very calm in there mm -hmm. tonight. He did. He did. He did. You know what, I, I was curious what you thought, though, about um, that being a thing of beauty. The shorts on Dennis Hallman being a thing of, of, of not, you know, that was dis disgraceful, would you say? I mean, how did you feel about that? I'd call it disgusting. That was disgusting. Uh, I don't know how his cornermen, first of all, I'm pissed off that somebody that works for me let him come out with those on, number one. Number two, how, as a cornerman, how do you seriously say, dude, this might be a bad idea. You, you might not want to wear these out there. Uh, it, it was just, it, it, was, it was not good. It, it, it will never happen again, I can guarantee you that. I guess in my... And I'm serious. No. I seriously gave Ebersol the, 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 yeah. the uh, $70,000 bonus. There were only three bonuses tonight. Tito, Rashad for fight of the night, and then Vitor for the knockout of the night. That's it. There were no more bonuses. I gave him that bonus for getting that off television as fast as possible. And that's the truth. Yeah, no, I, I believe it. And I kind of felt like it's one of those things where the fighters now feel like, I got to make a name for myself. I got to put on a display. I got to make people remember me. And that was his gimmick. Looks like it backfired. Yeah, you, you don't want to be remembered for that. That's the last thing you want to be remembered for, is, is going out there and, and, and making people watch five minutes of that. So now is o o Akiyama somebody that we're just going to have to think about in hindsight now? Is he still got a career with you? We got to see. I mean, I, I've... Lorenzo and I have been terrorizing him to go to 170. Yeah. Can he make it? Yeah, he, he could make 170. Um, if you look at when he goes up against the other 85 pounders, how big they are, he could make 70. And uh, we'll see what happens. I, I just have so much respect for the guy. I really do respect him as a fighter. He, he's, he's, he's my uh, Japanese Arturo Gotti. Yeah, it's like you need a guy like uh, Akiyama around. I just, I, I like him. I respect him. I respect him a, as a person and as a fighter, and I don't know. We'll see what happens. Well, if he does go down to 170, he's going to be facing a guy like Roy McDonald, who, you know, at such a young age, I know everybody, and we even said that to him, are you sick of being called this young phenom? But he really is unbelievable for being so young, don't you think? You know who said the most great things about this kid is George St. Pierre. George St. Pierre thinks this kid's the next coming and thinks he's the next big thing. Well, I mean, I, I just didn't, I didn't expect, not that I didn't expect him to be so good because he was terrific in Toronto, but he just manhandled him. Pyle just didn't, didn't even really seem to have a chance in there tonight. Yeah, and, and understand this, I've had a lot of talks with Pyle. This kid is mentally, physically, emotionally in the right place, and, and he felt like all things were lining up and it was his time. So he didn't just go in there and beat, you know, if you look at it on, oh, he beat a guy who said, he, he beat he beat a guy who was really in there to win right. and who was really talented and had a lot of experience under his belt. Right. Getting back to the Akiyama fight though, for Vitor, does he get the winner of Anderson and Yushin Okami? It'd be tough to do that. Listen, if, if, 
if Vitor versus Anderson was this war like him and Chael Sonnen and it was like, you know, that'd be one thing. But the way that that fight ended, Vitor has some work to do. I can respect that. I want to talk about Chad Mendez, undefeated, featherweight. Where does he stand right now? Do you like his style of fighting? It feels like somebody with that many wins, no losses, is a legit shot for a title. I agree. And, and, and you know, he, he's, he's there. Problem is, I think he broke his hand tonight. His hand was all blown up. He says it's not. But couldn't close it. Listen, when your hand is blown up like a balloon and you can't close your fingers, something's wrong in there. It's, it's, it's not good. Uh, you know, uh, so we'll see what happens with his hand and then we'll go from there. And I know we're going to get Rashad back in as soon as possible. That's what you're saying. So is he definitely getting the winner of Jones Rampage? He definitely gets the winner of that fight. Very nice. Well, congrats. It was a fun night, and I got to say, I know I'm going to get grief for it, but you look good in gray. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> grief from the cameraman or grief from the fans? <laughs> all of them. All of them. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> you do.